Eric. Yeah. Uh, Hi, this is Eric Martin from the band Mr. Big, and you know the short, handsome Italian one that stands right in the middle between Billy Sheehan, Paul Gilbert, and Pat Torpy. Well, I'm here with you, and you're here watching me and Mr. Big on Mariscal Rock. Let's start again. Well, first of all, uh, uh, welcome to Spain. It's Thank really you. a pleasure for us to have the chance to interview with you Thank and you. to see you uh, again in, in Madrid in this concert. Right on. Thank you very much. Yeah. Well, I, I, I seem to be coming back to uh, Spain a lot. Mm -hmm. They're doing like uh, Mr. Big stuff, but I like also my, my solo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, playing acoustic shows and stuff. Migrating towards Spain. I don't know. Maybe it's the weather. I don't know. <laughs> sure. Okay, well, uh, you are in this moment uh, uh, promoting a live and live concerts during a tour about an excellent new album. Sincerely, we think oh, oh, right uh, in, in all the colleagues in our production said that maybe it's the best album of Mr. Big in many years, you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, explain us briefly the story behind this album. How many times have you been working in the studio composing the songs? Yeah, it was, it was a little difficult because, you know, after uh, 2011, we had toured for about maybe seven, maybe even ten months. And um, if you know the history of our rock and roll band, mm -hmm. you know, maybe and that could have been one of the reasons why we split up a long time ago, because we just spent a lot of time on the road. We were cooped up in airplanes or tour buses or just working together too much that we didn't have any time for our families. And, mm -hmm. and maybe we got it on each other's nerves a bit. But uh, when we decided to get back together in 2009, we said, we're going we're gonna to tour at our own pace and make everything painless and let's not uh, let's not go back to where it used to be where we're all like you know all, mm -hmm. almost going to kill each other you know yeah. and so 2011 came and we were uh, that what if album was really great and we were working our ass off but maybe a little too long and so we had a two to three year break which is unfortunate you know because okay I'm, I keep going back but we, uh, like we said, we work at our own pace, and if we have other projects, nothing is a priority, you know, even Mr. Big. Just, we're doing Mr. Big because it's fun again, it's great to be on stage playing Mr. Big music for our fans, but we don't, it's not clockwork, we don't have to have an album every year. Do you understand a little bit? Yes. So, um, in the interim of two to three year break, Billy Sheehan, uh, got the winery dogs going, yes. and man, it took off. It was it, it got it. It's getting bigger and bigger. And then you got um, Paul Gilbert, who uh, you know he was he was teaching, and he was also um, he did a solo album, you know the Stone Pushing Uphill album. It's kind of a covers album, but he you know instrumental. Mm -hmm. And his wife and him were working on an American release, a baby, you know. Ah, okay. And uh, and I and I didn't know anything about Pat Torpy. I mean, I called him a couple times and emailed him, and he, he seemed like he was doing okay. He was spending a lot more time with his family. He also kind of a real estate guy. He he has some property that he his family, you know, uh, in Austin, Texas, and, you know, he seemed busy, but I, n I didn't know anything about his illness or anything like that. So I broke the cardinal rule and started calling everybody, going, guys, it's been three years, man, I want to do another Mr. Big record. And we made it a pact, we're like, we can't do that, don't, don't make any plans, <laughs> you know, it's a big thing, so I started calling everybody, and the first one who responded was Billy. He put together, uh, he had been putting together a hard drive, like a rock vault of every idea, we call them sniglets or little gems or scraps of every idea that we've ever written. You know, they're not finished songs at all, it's just like riffs. So he, he was like, you know, you got a bone collector, you got a riff collector, and that was Billy. And so Billy sent out a hard drive to, to every one of us through like Dropbox, man, all that stuff. We're all tech, we're all hip now. It used to be just like sending cassettes through the mail, but now it's uh, it's hard drive. And anything we had, we we wrote, mm -hmm. like within, I think when I start when I called, it was around 2012 and 13. And so anything that we'd have an idea, we'd throw another hard hard drive. You know, Billy would do it, Pat, you know, 
and this is in between winery dogs and this is in between my solo acoustic shit and so um, when it when it came down to getting together um, we we had a conference call yeah and we discussed okay let's let's start demoing stuff up and the only one available was Pat Torby so I'm trying to make this short but I can't you know because it's this is this is exactly how it went down so Billy was on the road with winery dogs Paul's out I think in Japan promoting his solo stuff and I went to Pat Torpy's house in LA I live in San Francisco and uh, he, you know uh, we went there and our producer Pat Regan who produced you know if you, any Mr. Big fans out there Pat Regan produced our Get Over It album yeah. with Richie Kotzen it's all very incestual everybody knows everybody so <clears throat> me and Pat Torpy he he had a, a first he was working with a drum set and then we worked with a V drum set like an electronic and he, granted he looked tired he looked kind of beat up but I didn't question you know so I didn't I didn't want to go hey man what's wrong with you you know I wanted him to say it and he eventually did I mean I played acoustic guitar he played these V drums Pat recorded everything and we did uh, I took all the riffs that they they had on the hard drive the, the ones that I missed from 2011 the ones that I missed even like in the late 90s I went oh I love that riff that actually turned into one of our songs I forget to breathe this sort of Jimi Hendrix riff that I went God Paul Gilbert had been playing that since the day he quit you know I went oh my god that's an awesome lick but anyway we took that and me and Pat mm -hmm. arranged and and cut and pasted and glued and chopped up and took like 10 ideas and made one song anyway in the middle of that and it was only like two or three days in Pat told me that he had Parkinson's disease and I went I knew it had to be something because he, he looked really tired and really weak and uh, it was uh, the only adjective that I can think of right now is I was heartbroken because I I don't know anybody with somebody I mean I've gone through cancer not me personally but with my family and yeah. I've gone through you know um, um, done tons of illnesses with people but never like Parkinson's where there's you know there's there's absolutely no cure for yeah. there's there is like some medicine that you could take that to sort of stop the tremors and stuff but he was he couldn't sleep he couldn't eat he didn't have like he was depressed. I mean, I'm not, I don't know very much about Parkinson's. Only that I'm hanging out with Paul, Pat Torpy for you know three four months now. The fact that uh, it takes a hold of your brain and it and it it puts really dark thoughts in, yeah. and, you know. And so anyway, the only thing I could do, man, was uh, just go. Come on, man. You know, I didn't know what else to do. I was like, come on, Pat. Let's just come on. Let's just get back into the work. And he was like, yeah, but uh, I don't feel it. And I go, no, no, come on, man. That's all I could do. And later on, you know, actually a couple of weeks ago, Pat goes, Eric was my cheerleader, you know. Mm -hmm. That's all I could do. So anyway, so me and Pat did all the demos. And then when uh, Pat, I mean, sorry, uh, Paul and Billy eventually returned mm -hmm. to the fold, then we said, okay, here's like 10 songs that we came up with. And they go, okay, cool. So we... We kind of learned them, like at Pat's studio, and then we moved over to Paul's studio in another part of North Hollywood. And me and Paul wrote uh, Gotta Love the Ride together. First time I'd ever written a song with Paul in the room by myself. Mm -hmm. It's always been with the band, or Paul will send something to me, and I'll go, yeah, you know that riff? This is years ago. You know that riff? Yeah, it's called Merciless. Mm -hmm. You know, I give that. So this is the first time we wrote song there and then Billy came and then we wrote stories we could tell and that was an interesting story in itself but that that was it you know it was hard because nobody was there yeah but yeah. it's mr. big yeah, sure it's mm -hmm. so it don't matter what happens I mean like okay here's a bunch of songs mm -hmm. we play them and it always I mean it always turns <laughs> out pretty damn good you know uh -huh, sure well, and what songs of this album uh, are you playing now in, in concert? And what what songs do you think have a cause better reaction for people? Um, Gotta love the ride um, was our 
uh, yeah, it's like the second song in the set. Daddy Brothers first. Mm -hmm. Daddy Brothers always kind of first. That yeah. that would kind of charges people up. We tried to do other things and maybe have "Gotta Love the Ride" first, mm -hmm. but I, I don't. I, you know, people are so used to the Mr. Big. You know, you, you play that speedy kind of song, yeah. not speed metal, but like you yeah, know, I, I know, like you know, uh, anxious metal or anxious <laughs> yes. soulful metal, whatever. And then um, yeah, but "Gotta Love the Ride." I guess people go in. Um, there's a song that, uh, oh shit. Okay, well, I'm trying to think because it's kind of all new and it's only been the fourth gig, but mm -hmm. this will be the fifth gig. I Forget to Breathe. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of, you know, the Jimi Hendrix kind of thing. It's kind of cool. Different. Yeah. Different compared to some of the other stuff. Um, fuck. I can't think. I can't think. It's not necessarily the whole set list. No, no, no. no. Uh, but I mean, we, we play like a bunch of old stuff. Yeah. You know, staple, mm -hmm. Mr. Big stuff, obviously like Daddies and Addicted to That Rush, mm -hmm. and some rare ones. And I don't know when this is going to go out, but we, we play, um, we've been playing Out of the Underground, uh -huh. which is actually rare. We haven't played that in years. Years and years. Yeah. And, um, and then we play like a handful of songs from What If. That people know, and then this one, I think there's like a, I think we like play five songs from the new album. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure, <laughs> fantastic. Um, and well, uh, well, just explain me uh, very good all the situation with Pat Torpy, but uh, we read that uh, Pat Torpy obviously can't play in this moment with the band. But is is touring with you, or 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 is uh, at home? No, he's no, he's here. He's here. Yeah, yeah he's his brother. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Um, he was only gonna go. <coughs> it was kind of touch and go. Yeah. He didn't know. He, he wanted to go on the road. He wanted to, you know. He's got he, yeah. He's got a nutritionist, and he had a physical therapy, and he had when he when he finally started getting sleep, mm -hmm. he started getting stronger. If you can get stronger in that, mm -hmm. think about Pat Torpy. You know, his character. He's always been a very physical, strong guy, physically and mentally. Yeah. And to lose that, like. Kind of a little bit, of, bit of his sort of superpowers, you know. Mm -hmm. um, it was it was hard to watch, but then when he started getting some strength back, you know, he's coming back. Mm -hmm. And so he himself said he was worried about, um, you know, weathering the tour or not. And uh, so he suggested that we get a uh, like sort of a an extra muscle, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and so Billy uh, discovered Matt Starr. Billy played like some gig with Ace Freely, mm -hmm. and like a benefit or something. And and he looked over and he saw Matt, and Matt could play great drums. He sang, and he was also a nice guy. And that's, you yeah. know, if you guys are in rock and roll bands at home, that is kind of a prerequisite. You got to be a cool guy, because if you're really good and you're talented and you you know you look good on stage and you do your thing, but if you're a asshole, <laughs> you know you're going to be checking out, you know. But um, Matt was great and we actually did a an audition mm -hmm. which was really surreal um, Pat Torpy sat on the couch <laughs> and our manager Tim sat there and me and oh yeah and, and his name has to, happens to be Matt how confusing is that Pat and Matt you know <laughs> so me Paul Matt and Billy we jammed out alive and kicking green to the 60s mine uh, fucking something else and then take cover Mm -hmm. which is a signature Pat Torpy song. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so Matt's playing it, and he's doing pretty good, but Pat Torpy gets up, grabs his, he goes, let me show you. He grabs his sticks and sits down and goes, <laughs> and he starts playing. <clears throat> and we're all looking at him going, why don't you do it? You know? And he goes, nah, I just, I don't feel comfortable. Because like, Pat's biggest concern was he didn't want to let us down. And we're like, Pat, we want you out there. And uh, that was just going to be like maybe him going to Japan and maybe a couple little selected cities in Asia. But he started getting stronger, and I don't know if maybe he was feeling like, hey man, I don't want to go, I don't want to sit home and watch you guys do your thing, you know. And, and that made him stronger too. You know, kind of like, oh man, I want to be out there. And, you know, he had like some kind of a goal or something. I don't know what it was, but it was some kind of higher power that made Pat just 
you know, shine and, 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 and get stronger. So he, he started playing drums. Mm -hmm. he started. So I think Pat's playing like about four songs in the set. Mm -hmm. You know, the, he's not playing Take Cover, I wish he was, but he has a drum set yeah. mm -hmm. off to the side of the stage. Like a, like kind of a, it's called a cocktail kit. It's a smaller mm -hmm. kit. So he's playing that and he's singing every song. Uh -huh. <laughs> and he's up there and he's doing yeah. his thing, you know, pre playing percussion. Yeah. Well, I remember very well uh, when the first uh, Mr. Big album was released 25 years ago in 1989. I remember that many people, <laughs> many people my in, my in, back in, starting to hurt. in music press, I remember, for example, Metal Hammer <coughs> and, and others, said it's fantastic, it's a great band, it's a great album, but unfortunately it's very difficult that we'll, this band will be very longer because they are very famous musicians. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, like some kind of a super yes, group no, bullshit. Exactly, something like that. <laughs> if oh, if yeah, you could, yeah. what you... What do you say to people that does, didn't believe in, the, in this moment that now Mr. Big are still on the road and doing albums and, yeah. and as a band? I don't know if, uh, I, I don't know what fans thought. I thought maybe fans thought, and this was in the late 80s, yeah. so calling it Supergroup was like an advertising slogan. It looked good in print. Yeah. And, uh, and like, it was, it was really, it's, it, it's pretentious a little bit too. I mean, it just felt really like, I mean, I could see Billy and Paul were the big stars. Me and Pat had uh, done a lot of stuff, but we're like maybe <coughs> regional stars, you know. We were, I, I, I guess I was a, kind of a big star in San Francisco, you know. <laughs> and, um, and Pat, you know, he played in a bunch of bands that everybody's heard of, mm -hmm. but Pat was like, a well-kept secret, but Billy and Paul were the big superstars, and uh, <clears throat> it was, for me, it was flattering, but it was like, oh, come on, a super group, I don't know, and we always went in, well, I mean, we went into this project not going, ah, oh, we'll make an album or two, and, and then break up, and then form a new super group, and, you know, it's like an amoeba. And it just oh, keeps yeah. going, and, and now it's now it's kind of crazy. Now there's like a lot of those kind of, you know, let's think of a name, you know, the saints and sinners and devils and blah blah blah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And there's a bunch of super groups, but I think super group could be the kiss of death name, like a, the idea of it. Yes, I know. You have to keep telling people on. <clears throat> media like this that like no no we're gonna be around you know what I mean super group sounds egoed out and like you're only gonna make one album and kill each other and <laughs> fuck you you know and then people will go ah oh, that was a great album by you know <laughs> yeah no our intention was to to stick it out as long as we could I mean Okay, what more countries are you uh, visiting in this tour, and what plans you have uh, for next year? It would be possible, for example, to see Mr. Big in Europe again in summer festival or something like that. Well, in 2015, right now, that you know, that I can tell you, and and we won't have a band meeting, and I won't be like, fuck, sh shaken and not stirred. Um, we're gonna play a couple U.S. gigs. Yeah, and um, there is uh, some like penciled in, not in ink yet, but penciled in for South America. And um, we're going to see how it goes with our tour and see, you know, if we, I mean, it's great to play these gigs, but it's also campaigning for the record. Mm -hmm. Let's see how the record does and see how other schedules. I mean, look, remember I told you about the winery docks? Mm -hmm. I mean, they're yeah. fucking blowing up now. <laughs> so they're going to have to do an album again. <laughs> and... You know, t to be perfectly honest, I was, I was, I'm really, really happy that he's got that going. I, I mean, I wish I had like a solo kind of project. It was kind of blowing up too, yeah. but it's always been, you know, Mr. Big for me. Mm -hmm. But it's also there's a there's a huge respect factor in our band that, you know, if Winery Dogs is doing an album, we're not, I'm not, you know, I, I respect Billy, you know, and I, I want him to do great. I would love to keep going with Mr. Big. I mean, hey man, it, it was a lot of hard work that went into this album and I would hate to see that it just played like six weeks of a tour and mm -hmm. so long, you know? <laughs> so I, I personally would like to see it keep going, but I want I want the best for everybody else too. I mean, look, 
Paul just had a baby. Yeah. And a week later, <laughs> he's in Spain, you know? <laughs> and so, yeah, we want to keep the band around for for a long time, you know? Mm-hmm. I want to see it keep going, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, this is, thank you for saying the stories we could tell is a great album. I think it's a well-balanced yeah. record. I mean, it's, a, it's top shelf. It's, uh, you know, there's... There is a lot of cool playing ability, but the songs are kind of like the highlight, you know. But it's an evolution. Yeah. It's not like the last album you're gonna hear. Oh, that's, that's the last album. No, it's. I see more albums coming out because, trust me, yeah. that hard drive has tons of shit on it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, um, concretely, you as a singer, uh, in what way do you uh, take your voice? Uh, Perfect for the shows. How I don't is. talk too much. Um, and a part of that, although I do, I, they call oh, yeah. me Mr. Big Mouth in this band. Mm-hmm. Um, I, um, you know, I'll kind of uh, throat coat teas and yeah. Ricola. I've got a cold tea I drink. Um, sleep is the key for me. Mm-hmm. Like many singers say the same. Yeah, I mean. I like worry about going to sound check. I fucking hate sound check. Yeah. I mean, I I go out there and check the mic for the for our sound engineer, but I I don't like doing the gig twice, you know. Mm-hmm. And I would rather like that's where I was before I saw you guys. You know, I was upstairs, you know, catching my beauty sleep. <laughs> It's not working too well. <laughs> getting older, <laughs> but uh, yes, if I don't have eight hours mm-hmm. I, I, I panic yeah. I don't think I'm going to do a very good gig um, I'm trying not to talk too much okay. but I can't talk but I can't help it don't worry we're finishing <laughs> no no okay thank you you're saving you're saving my life today yeah. All right okay well uh, finally for the Spanish fans do you want to say anything more something special or give us a salute for the Spanish people well it's um Every time you uh, get together with Mr. Big, you know, it's like an anxiety of, uh, uh, you know, let's get this thing done as quick as we can, you know, like because I mean we're really good at being in the studio and all, and that's fun, but the best part and the key to um, uh, my happiness is being on stage, and I'm not gonna, I don't want to hurt any other country's feelings or anything like that, but you know, you really look forward to playing in Spain, you really do, I mean. It, it's an, an incredible and enthusiastic audience, very loyal. I mean, like I've said it a million times about Japan, but yeah. there are a handful of countries that still have waved the rock and roll freak flag that kept go, kept it going. There's still mm-hmm. rock and roll. I mean, like, I mean, look, but radio, you know, used to be your friend. The, who's your friend or the people? Yeah. The people keep rock and roll alive. I don't know who said rock and roll is dead but that guy James Simmons yeah 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 <laughs> you know, I didn't say it you said it I, I'm, I'm oblivious to who said it but that person's wrong and uh, where rock is alive is in España sure all right <laughs> okay